Please take note that today's shiur for Daf Chof Beis begins on Chof Beis Omid Beis, nine lines from the top. Even though we are, in fact, learning according to a Daf Yomi schedule, our previous shiur for Daf Chof Aleph uh, spilled over onto Chof Beis because of the long topic, the issue of Baal Megiz Gaiz O Meaker Kookar. So again, Chof Beis Omid Beis, nine lines from the top. Before we begin the actual Gemara text, we glance at the side where you have a no say a topic heading. Ma mashmos, what is implied by a woman that says by a person that says Hareini beikvayif sheimeres isha shniel achreish shama kabolas nizirus ayadei isha rishayna. A woman said, "I am accepting upon myself nizirus," and her friend heard her and said, "Hareini beikvayif." What does Hareini Be'ikvayach mean? Does it mean Hareini Be'sofeich? I am like you at the end. And in that case, Be'ikvayach comes from the word Ekev. Ekev means the heel, like the bottom of a person, the end of something. So I am like you at the end, at, as you are at the end. Uh, or, Be'daita Lios Kimei Kora. Or, by saying Hareini Be'ikvayach, she's trying to pattern herself after the first woman from the very outset. This uh, deliberation is familiar to us, those who learned uh, our previous shiur, and now we want to apply it to this particular statement. So a second woman, we turn to the Gemara text, Omra Law, that's a second woman after hearing the first woman accept Nazirus. She says, Hareini Nazira Be'ikvayach. I am a Nazir Be'ikvayach. Mahu. What is the intention here? Hareini Be'ikvayach Be'kula Milsa Fisharya. I am like you with everything that has happened to you and everything. And... Uh, we didn't mention, but once again, we have to mention that the first woman who had accepted the Zerus, uh her husband uh, had been Mayfair the Neder. So we have a first woman accepting the Zerus, a second woman saying, I am like you, and the husband of the first woman coming and absolving his wife of her Neder. The second woman who says, Hareini Bigvayach, is she saying, I am like you, Bekula Milsa, with regard to everything, and she too will be released. Oidilma ke mikami de lefer lo bailo vasira. Or is she saying that I am like you from before the Hafara? Toshma. So we have a uh, an attempt here. It's a long attempt. We've marked it thusly. A woman accepted the zirus, and the husband, upon hearing the wife vow, he says, "I too." And it's understood right now that by his saying vani, it's like saying bikvayach. I am, I am uh, following you. Eino yochol lahafer. The Mishnah rules that the husband cannot undo the vow. The Esau Gadaitoch ki Omar lo hareni bikvayach beikora komatvis. If you were to think that the hareni bikvayach statement is an attempt on the second woman to be like the first woman at her at the outset, the husband then keeping the parallel would be saying, "I am like you, my dear wife." At the outset, lefer la lidida the loikim today. Let the husband absolve the wife's vow, and let his own vow remain. But the source said that the husband cannot absolve the vow. Elolav shma mino bekula milsa matvis. Rather, it must be that by saying vani or bikvayich, the 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 listener, the second person, the is 
paralleling themselves to the first person from the very beginning, straight through. From the that is, and uh, not just the not just the beginning, but from the beginning till the end. The Hilkoch, who the law motzi mefer, and therefore the husband cannot be made for his wife's vow because in doing so he would be then absolving himself from his own vow and we've indicated in the past that a person cannot do that a person cannot absolve themselves from their own vows ha isha di amra hareni bigvayach he nami muteras but a uh a second woman who was saying upon hearing her friend's vow and she reacts I am big vayach she is saying I am like you from beginning to end just like we said in the case of the husband the fact that he can't be mefer that reflects the idea that the husband is re- is paralleling himself to the wife from beginning to end and since an absolution on his part would be tantamount to absolving his own vow, therefore he can't be mefer. But in the case of the the friend saying Hareni Vikvayach, we apply the same concept that I am like you from beginning to end, and when the first woman's husband absolves her of the vow, the second woman will also be in effect released. Loy, the Gemara says, do not conclude thusly. Li'olam be'ikora komatfis. When a woman says hareni be'ikvayech, she's really paralleling herself to the origin, to the vow at its outset. Well, if that's the case, so then why can't, in the case of the husband, why can he not absolve the vow? As the Gemara suggested before, let him absolve the wife's vow that had been made at the outset, and let his own vow remain. So the Gemara explains, the Hacha, in the case of the Mishnah, the Baal cannot be made for Kevin the Omar law of Ani, since the husband said, and me too, Ke'oymer Kim Lichidomi. It's as if he is saying to her, I am confirming your vow. And once a husband confirms his wife's vow, he can no longer be mefer. He can't turn around and uh, change his mind. The Mitchell Akamasumotsi mefer. If he, however, seeks the assistance of a Torah sage or a court and absolves himself from his confirmation, then, assuming it's on the same day as the wife's as his hearing of the wife's vow, then he can undo it. And if not, the lo, lo. If he's not shoyu on his hakama, he can't be mefer anymore once he has confirmed his wife's vow. So, the Gemara feels that you cannot conclude our question of hareni nazir bikvayich from the din of the husband's inability to be Mayfair, his wife's Nizirus, after his having said Va'ani. Before continuing in the Gemara, we glance at the side where we have a no say, a topic heading, which reads Yishuv Stira Bein Mishnosenu Ubraisa, uh, an attempt to resolve what appears to be a contradiction between our Mishnah and another Tanaic source. The Gemara, Hareni Nazir Veat Viomra Amen. A man says, "I am a Nazir," and he says Veat, which uh, sounds as if he's saying, "And what about you?" Viomra Amen, and she says, "Yes." She confirms that she too wants to be a Nazir. Mefir es shelo v'shelo kayim. The husband can absolve her of the vow and his own vow remains intact Virominu we present a brisa Hareni Nozir Ve'at the Omra Omein Shnei Masurim now here notice we dashed underline Shnei Masurim contrast this with 
what we saw just before, where it said, Mefer Eshelah, he can absolve her of her vow. Here it says that in a case of the same nature, Hareini Nozir Va'at, and she says, Omein, both remain usher. V'im Lav, if she doesn't say Omein, Shnehem Mutorin, then both are mutter. The husband as well is mutter. Because he made his vow dependent on her. And if she didn't accept Nazirus, so his Nazirus also doesn't get started. Omar Rav Yehuda. Approach number one to what appears to be a contradiction. He says, Tini, re-explain the Brisa, or maybe restate the Brisa. Mefer es shelo v'shelo kayam. And don't read it as Shnehem Asurim, that both are also, but rather the husband can absolve her of her Nazirus, and his remains intact, just like we saw in the Mishnah. Abaye Omar, a second approach. Afilu Temo Kidekotani. Have the Brysa remain as it's stated, namely Shnehem Asurim. Brysa Kigon de Omar law, Hareni. Nozir va'at, the katoli nidro benidra. We continue at the top of Chav Gimel Omer Aleph. Umasnisim kigon to Omer Lo Hareini Nozir va'at Mai. The brisa was in effect a type of statement. I am a nozir with you, va'at. Not in an interrogative fashion, but rather in a declarative fashion. I am a nozir. If you too will be a Nazir. And if she confirms it, so then they're both Usr. In the Mishnah, it was the husband accepting Nazirus and asking his wife if she too wants to be a Nazir. Mishom Hachi, the Gemara continues, Mefir es Shelo, Vishelo Kayam. Therefore, he can uh, Mefir her, he, uh, Nazirus. If she accepts after he accepted upon himself Nazirus, if she accepts it, he can absolve her of that and his own Nazirus, which wasn't dependent on hers, his own Nazirus remains binding. Today's shear was not very long because of the fact that our previous shear had spilled over uh, so far as it did. With that, we conclude our shear for today.